India now has sort of become a major player on the global stage. I don't know how they've done it. <laughs> but all, you know, all people will see is they've done it. I think it's perfectly feasible we could see a, uh, an Indian uh, citizen on the moon at some point in the future. The actual landing itself, I mean, it was uh, the, only the fourth uh, nation to have ever managed a soft landing on the moon. Uh, hard landing is really easy. You just fire something at the moon and it gets there. Uh, quite a few nations have done that, but um, it was very significant. So Chandrayaan-3 is the third of the Chandrayaan missions. The first one discovered water um, in the South Pole region of the, the moon. The second one had a lander and a rover, just like this one, uh, but unfortunately they lost contact with it during the landing, which is why this third one is so uh, important for, for the Indian Space Agency and for um, you know the world globally, because uh, it's quite impressive to be able to land something on the moon on your second attempt. Um, certainly for, you think back to the 60s with NASA and uh, the Soviet Union, there was, there was definitely uh, not a second attempt that worked on anything. So um, the fact they've managed to do this and do it reasonably cheaply as well is massively significant. How they've made it so cheaply, I can't answer for you really. Um, I mean, the, the actual material, the, so the instruments on board the lander and the rover, they're, they're not the highest quality, they're not the, the best instruments because you know, for, if you're attempting something where you've got a good chance of failure, you're not gonna plug lots of money into it. But it's got the basics that they need to take, um, take the readings they want. So any future missions, they can actually put the decent tech on it because now, now they know it works. Uh, yeah, so I think the cost was slightly less, uh, but it was about the 80 million mark. And if you think a Falcon uh, launch is about 95 million, then you can see the, the comparative cost. And I mean, that, that one isn't going to the moon. So it's, it is really impressive that they've managed to do it for, for so cheap. And I don't know how they've done it, <laughs> but all, you know, all people will see is they've done it. India now has sort of become a major player on the global stage because they're looking at working now with NASA, with ESA, uh, who have been pushing for these uh, lunar missions, examining the moon, trying to get more of a permanent presence because India has now shown that they can land there safely. They've automated the landing process, which is the different from uh, difference from Chandrayaan-2. Um, so potentially uh, that's where the mistake was. In fact, there was a human error involved in the landing, but they've shown that they can do this. They've shown they can automate it. They are more likely to be getting asked to contribute now to major space projects. And that's the only way that these, these big projects like um, a continuous human presence on the moon is ever going to happen uh, by international cooperation. No nation or space agency can really afford to do it on their own. It's definitely a benefit for the political environment for India. Um, you know, they had um, their Prime Minister on saying that, that India is now on the moon. Um, they've joined that, that sort of uh, nation of, or group of nations that have landed on the moon now safely. And I think that is going to be very important. As I say, it's going to give them more uh, power when negotiating with other space agencies and they're likely to get us to help both with construction and planning uh, for future missions. The fact they've managed to land on the moon does suggest, I mean, to the to most people you think, oh, well, if you can land on the moon, you can land anywhere. Um, it's not quite that easy. Uh, there are different challenges depending on where you're going. Certainly, Venus uh, is one of the most difficult. Um, the, the best that's been managed so far was a uh, was the Russian series of Venera landers, and they, I think the, the one of them, the longest lasting one was about eight hours because of the heat and the pressure, it just crushes things as soon as they land. So uh, I think Venus is a long way off for ISRO. Uh, Mars, potentially, but they're gonna need to make sure they've got the right uh, rockets for using that because it's a lot further to go. With the moon, if something happens, you know, you've got that instant communication, it's only a few days away. Mars, your average trip takes seven, eight months. So there is a big, big difference between uh, Mars and the Moon, but there's nothing to say they couldn't do it in the future. Um, orbiters um, and that sort of mission are the way to go first before they start getting in depth, I would say. I think it's perfectly feasible we could see a, uh, an Indian uh, citizen on the moon at some point in the future. I mean, to be honest, they could just go up with one of the SpaceX ones if need be. But um, <laughs> in terms of the Indian Space Agency sending a manned launch, uh, you know, potentially, I think it's still quite a few years away um, because again, just like trying to go to Mars or anywhere else, there are a lot of additional things you have to consider. 
um, especially if you want to get that person back, which is the main challenge. But uh, yeah, I could see it happening just a few years away yet. So the, the significance of, of finding water on the moon um, is one of those basic building blocks of life. Nobody survives without water. Now we can take our own water with us, but it's really heavy. Um, you might not think a glass of water is heavy, but in comparison to everything else we need, it, it is. Um, I mean, think about trying to lift a swimming pool up into space. Uh, so having water already there means we don't have to take it. Now water is useful, not just for us to drink or to try and water any plants that we're going to need to grow to feed people, but you can also break it down into hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen is useful for breathing. You can combine that hydrogen and oxygen back together um, and it's actually a fuel as well. So it has multiple uses and having it is just really, really important. <laughs> um, as well as the water, you know, they're, they're looking for other minerals that we could use to, to make lunar concrete and make structures on the moon. The idea of a, of a lunar base has been going for many years. It is something that could potentially happen uh, maybe in the next 10 to 15 years. So I think it's still quite a few years away, but no harm people dreaming.